Gamers, I started an all new account and played through the game again to get an idea of what Honkai Star Rail is like for new players. I've got some tips from my veteran account as well as my new one. Let's get started. For tip number one, only level up five or six characters to get you started. What I recommend you do is some sort of support unit like Ting Yun or Pela if you've got them, a main DPS, whoever it is. If it's Dan Hung, if it's Zila, if it's Jing Liu who's coming on a banner soon, or Topaz, I don't care who, but one main DPS, one sort of supporting unit or debuffing unit like a Pela or a Ting Yun. Then build a healer. I don't care if it's Lynx, I don't care if it's Natasha. And then you want some sort of tank like a Gepard, a Fushuan, or even the Fire MC who's awesome. If you build a support, a damage dealer, a healer, and a tank, you can beat most content in the game, especially if you've got good elemental coverage. But overall, you're going to want two full teams. I have these units all built and maxed out. And if you go beyond six, seven, eight units being built, you're going to start running into problems. The reason why is because resources are finite, they're limited, and it takes a lot of time to get everyone built out. And so my Ting Yun maxed out with levels, maxed out with a light cone, maxed out abilities for the most part, maxed out abilities, light cone. You see what I'm saying here? I've got all these characters at their full potential. If you spread yourself too thin, they're all going to suck. And the biggest issue is trying to level up all these units and get all their stuff is going to push you up in your world tier, your equilibrium level. As soon as I hit Trailblaze 50, I'm going to be in another tier with harder enemies and require more upgrades to get them to the level that I can fight and win and do well. If you don't pre-farm for your core cast of characters, if you don't max them out, they're all going to suck and you're going to be perpetually behind. Almost all of your energy should be spent on either golden calyxes to get experience and things. These are actually extremely high value starting at TL40 because you can start getting purple books uh, and purple weapon materials. This is very good to farm at TL40 to max out all your characters, get those levels up. And then crimson, these are very good as well because these are gonna be for your traces and this is where a lot of your damage and survivability comes from. Focus on maxing these out first before you do anything else. You're also going to have to do Stagnant sh uh, Shadow if you want to ascend your characters. That's just kind of par for the course. Uh, but for the most part, you want to be grinding all these materials to get the guaranteed upgrades first. Do not get baited into doing relics. Relics are absolute trash until much, much, much later. I have not even touched them because it is such a colossal waste of time. Let me show you where you can get some good starter relics to get you on your way. On each planet, you're going to get currency from doing quests as well as chests. And this is going to amass up pretty quickly, and it's a good way to get some resources early on for your characters, but also buy some of your first four-star gear. And this could be a game changer for your account if they roll well. I would recommend getting these bad boys because if you get something like a crit damage or crit uh, chance chest piece, that could be amazing. Speed boots you might use for the next three months. And gloves are also pretty solid pickups. If you look at my account, all of these five-star relics are from the weekly bosses that are super valuable to do anyways, but also from guaranteed sources. And a lot of these purples are from chests and, and, and just free stuff that you can get while playing. And it's enough to get my account going and, and progressing very nicely. But even though I only have a few leveled pieces on each character, if I go into any of my characters and you look at my relics, a lot of these pieces aren't even maxed out or fully leveled. And that's okay. You don't need them to be early on. As long as you've got your levels and your traces, you'll be strong enough to beat most content. But if you do want to level something up, a glove is a great option because it's got a base attack. And this amount of attack is insanely powerful in the early game. So if you get a purple glove that has some good substats like speed, crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, level them up, don't even blink, just do it, get that damage, and you're going to be one-shotting enemies in no time. Another important thing with relics is taking them to 15 is insanely expensive. Like, it's crazy, and the amount of resources you have are very finite. Here's what I would recommend you do, is 
take your relics to level 12. And the reason why is because to take something from 12 to 15 is the same amount of experience as going from 1 to 12. And so if I was to take up, uh, you know, a brand new piece here, I would get uh, increasing stats each time I leveled it up, but I would get an extra roll into these different substats, right? And so I can get four extra substats uh, for the cost of one extra upgrade from 12 to 15, if that makes sense. I could level up an extra piece, get a whole bunch of extra stats, and a lot of people, uh, they level up their relics to 12, and they only take the god rolls up to 15, so be very careful with that. There's also a few of these little mini games that are scattered around the different worlds. This one is after the Silver Wolf quest, and it allows you to get some early quantum pieces that can be really good for your account, especially because you get a free QQ character uh, that can use the quantum set. Um, but there's a few other ones that are very valuable, and I want to show you that right now. In the Silver Main Guard area, you can get some fire pieces, but to be honest with you, these are more damage focused. So if you don't have a fire DPS, this won't be amazing. But if you're playing this when someone like Topaz is coming out, this might actually be pretty good. In the same Silver Main Guard area, there's also this one that gives you the wind set. Now, a little tip for you, this set is very good on Pela because of this bad boy, allowing you to turn cycle very quickly and keep all of the enemies with defense down on them. But these ones start to get juicy because not only do they give you some 4-star relics, they also give you some of your first 5-star relics from very good pieces. This one is after doing the Yukong story quest and it's a little bit further into your journey, but it's available right here. Uh, in the Central Star Skiff Haven. And the next one is after the Dan Hung quest in the Alchemy Commission, where you can get this awesome HP percentage set, and it's going to be a big boost to your account. Now, this is one of my only 5-star light cones, and they can be extremely valuable. But did you know that you can get some for free? The simulated universe is something you should be doing every week, no matter what, because not only can you get some stellar jade, you can also get a free pull every week, some free experience for your trailblaze level, and some relics. But on top of that, each week you can get Herda Bonds, and I actually currently have nine of them saved up. Now, what can you do with the Herda Bonds? Well, you can actually buy five-star light cones, and some of these are pretty cracked. This is for a destruction character, they've got one for a hunt character, nihility, and for preservation. So you've got pretty good coverage for a lot of different characters, and these are usually pretty well up there, pretty solid light cones, nothing to sneeze at. Now, on top of that, you can eventually get super impositions or dupes or copies of these light cones and make them even stronger. But I would recommend getting a lot of these different light cones. This one is very good for preservation characters like Fu Xuan, but it's not as good on someone like Jepard who already creates shields because this is all shield focused. I think that the overall most picked up one is the hunt light cone because it gives you some crit rate. Uh, but the destruction one can be really good on certain characters. The new character, Jing Liu, who's coming out, is going to be pretty good. It works very well on Dan Hung. It can work on Clara. This one's pretty popular as well. But the Nihility one is also quite solid overall. Now, the other thing is, as you complete the different worlds, you get chunks of these Herd of Bonds. And so you can easily get two Light Cones relatively early in the game. The simulated universe is also insane for getting Stellar Jade, because there's different blessings, events, and curio that you can get. And as you replay it and get different buffs, you're going to get a ton of Stellar Jade. Uh, this is like thousands upon thousands of Stellar Jade to help you get some different 5-star characters along the way. This is a, a great resource, it's really fun to do overall, and I recommend that you jump in and you try different things, use different paths, use different characters, and unlock all those Stellar Jade. There's also the Swarm Disaster, which is just kind of like a, a hard mode or a, a, a more difficult version that you play down the road, and this has more resources for you to get. Now, this is a gacha game, so I want to talk about the shops. The Supply Pass is relatively good value, but you can play this game free to play if you want to. Uh, this one does give a lot of Stellar Jade for the money, I would never, ever recommend you buy, like, big packs of this Stellar Jade. It's so expensive to be buying all this stuff, and 
I think that you will regret it in a lot of cases if you spend so uh, like a ton of money on this game, hundreds of dollars for characters that you know eventually you're gonna forget about and you're not gonna care about. If you're having fun, do your thing. But if anything, I would just be a light spender kind of thing. As for this currency, you get this from wishing. There's a few things you can do. You can buy wishes, so I could buy five wishes from that, or you can save up and you can get some different light cones. Um, I'm only going to shout out one of them. This Bronia light cone is quite good. It's a very, very good light cone. You have a couple different options. Do you want more characters or do you want to save up for a good guaranteed uh, light cone upgrade for your characters that you do have? I recommend, or, or uh, I would recommend this one, uh, but I personally go for the wishes because I want more characters because I think it's more fun. Ember Exchange. This is uh, another currency that you get for free. You can buy some of these trace materials for upgrades, but if you spend too much of it, you can't get the weekly, I mean monthly, <laughs> resetting wishes, all right? You want to get these wishes every single month. Uh, I've got 27 days until this resets again, but you'd be surprised if you take a little break or you spend too much of this, you might not be able to buy these wishes, and that's going to be a mistake for you. So make sure that you get these, uh, these special passes uh, and these Star Rail passes every single month. This is all trash, don't touch it! There's always going to be different events going on, so depending when you watch this video, you might have completely different events, but these are always relatively quick to do for quite a bit of reward, uh, but some of them do tend to get pretty boring. There's also usually like a free 10 pull. This is a, a second uh, gift that we got, but there's usually a free 10 pull just from logging in. But for the most part, do your events if you really want to make progress in this game because they give experience, they give you pulls, uh, and sometimes they even give you a free four-star character. Um, so they're definitely important to do, even if they get monotonous here and there. But if you go down, uh, it's kind of hidden behind me here. This thing here, as you progress through the story, you can do uh, or redo some of these old events. They're very time consuming for the rewards. They're, they're quite trash, other than Aurum Alley. Now this may change again while watching this video in the future, but for right now, Aurum Alley still gives amazing progression, tons of rewards. This is very worth doing overall, even though it's a little bit boring. Uh, this is a big boost to your account. It can give you experience to get to the next world tiers. It can give you uh, essential materials uh, for your for your traces and for your uh, your character's experience, and a ton of stellar jade and wishes. So make sure you do it. As for light cones or weapons, um, I would recommend checking out some different tier lists if they're available just to see what's good and what isn't. There's quite a few available online and I think they do a pretty good job, but there are some free 5 star ones that you can buy, which I mentioned before, but there's also some free 4 star ones that you can get that are overall pretty good and safe to invest in. I want to show you where you can get some of those right now. If you want some free 4 star light cones, there is this messenger, uh, memory of chaos area that you can go into, and there's multiple challenges for you to complete. Memory of chaos resets every couple of weeks, and you can farm a modest amount of materials uh, to buy light cones. So that's pretty cool. But there's also these bigger challenges here that are kind of one and done, and you get a very big boost uh, of this material to get you started. Uh, you get 40 and 20, it's, it's like a lot. And from this, you can actually buy light cones from the messenger. A few of them are pretty good. Quid Pro Quo is one of my favorite ones because it's relatively safe and valuable, and you can use it on any of your healers because it gives your team some energy, so that one's pretty darn good. Fermata is good if you're using damage over time units. Uh, I personally don't build that many of them, but this one's pretty good. Um, River Flows can work with certain hunt characters. Past and Future is a decent Harmony light cone, but I would say the second best one on here is probably Serious Breakfast. There's a reason to use all of them in different situations, but this one is actually quite good for a free light cone, and it's better than some paid light cones, so it's, it's pretty solid. Fill out your roster with the light cones that you need, but there's another location to get some other free ones. The weekly bosses also give you this material to allow you to buy them, but you can actually get like a full-on light cone. So uh, if you get lucky and you get one, that's pretty sweet. It's not always going to be a good one, but this is another option for you as well. For my next tip, if you want to be really sweaty and really progress your account, do all the side quests as soon as humanly possible. The reason why is a lot of your progress is gated by your Trailblaze level. 
and all the side quests give you Trailblaze experience. The faster you level that up, the more valuable your daily energy every single day is. I'm slacking on these, but if I was to go and pound through all these quests today, uh, it would allow me to, to get even closer to this next level, 48, 49. And the sooner I can get to 50 and the next equilibrium level, the better. This is something that I need to get working on very soon because if I'm wasting two, three days not being at max level that I could be, I'm just wasting value every single day. So if you want to be, gr you know, grinding, do your quests now. Let's talk about the battle pass. The battle pass uh, gives you a lot of resources, and if you spend money on it, you get even more. Okay? Uh, the big key things is, is getting the free wishes that you can get, uh, but the other colossally amazing thing is the self-modeling resin. If you can get this, this can be an account-changing piece, and uh, I want to give you some recommendations for using this bad boy to take your account to the next level. Once again, just a warning that it can start adding up if you're doing the monthly passes and you're getting the battle pass. It can start to get expensive, so be careful with your funds. With the self-modeling resin, you can choose any set in the game, and you can actually choose the main stat, but you can only do it one time. So this could be pretty amazing choosing the exact stat for the piece that you want, but I've got a recommendation. Uh, if you're going to be using one of these in the early game, there's a couple things that you can build, but my recommendation is choose this set, this energy regeneration set, and on the link rope, you want to choose energy regeneration. The reason why is this is a very good set, and it's universally good on any harmony, abundance, tank characters. It's good everywhere. And what this energy regeneration does is it allows you to um, get your ultimate back sooner. In some cases, a turn or two sooner than if you didn't have it. And so by using this set, an energy regeneration rope, it is a game changer for your characters. Another decent option would be to use the speed set as well as a speed boot. Uh, that one would be pretty good, but until you've got a bunch of link ropes with energy, I wouldn't do this. But a speed set speed boot can be very good for your team. This allows you to be very fast, uh, buff your team or heal your team. This is a really good set overall, uh, in my opinion. And then way down the road, after you've got some good options, you could use it to build things like uh, crit damage or crit rate chest piece. You could get some attack boots, whatever you need. But these are very rare things, and I would not recommend you use them lightly. Another tip is uh, to use your friends list. I have a bunch of really high-level people added on my account, and I want to show you why it's kind of nice. Now, not everyone would like this, but if you want to save some time, you can bring in people's crazy, like, maxed out characters, and they will farm everything for you and just destroy these enemies and do a ton of damage. And, uh, it's kind of nice to save time. For me, you know, I'm playing on an alt account, I just want to, you know, pump through stuff really quickly, and having these really juiced up characters is pretty cool. Now, for my next tip, I just want to give you a quick rundown of a bunch of the characters and why they're good. All right, let's get started. The MC Preservation, this is a little bit later in the game, is a pretty decent tank that can actually taunt all units, can provide a little bit of shields, and is pretty good at breaking shields. It is a free unit that you can get with maxed out Eidolons, pretty darn good. Zila is pretty good single target, but I think she's been power crept. Japard, uh, great shielding unit, can keep you alive, highly recommend. Fushuan, insane at keeping your team alive by mitigating damage taken uh, and can even heal. March 7th, can provide big shields, can cleanse, can even freeze units. Dan Hung, mid, he's okay. Asta, can speed up your team and is pretty good. She's great at breaking fire shields. Herda, when built properly, can be a crazy uh, follow-up attack unit to kill enemies, but she's not heavily used. Serval, great area of effect. Um, she's She's... Awesome for taking out uh, electric shields. I use her currently and she's really good. Natasha is a free healer. Great cleanser. Awesome unit. Uh, she's actually as good, if not better, than the five-star healer, Bailu. She's really good. Pela, cracked. Top-tier unit. 
Uh, she can shred defenses. She can uh, remove buffs from the enemy, which can be very good for annoying enemies. Would definitely recommend. Uh, Sampo, he is great at breaking shields for wind. He can do damage over time, but he's going to excel with um, someone like Kafka to benefit from his damage over time. Hook is a decent fire single tar target damage dealer. I think she's going to get power corrupt personally. Lynx is an S tier, God tier healer. Highly recommend you build her if you have her. QQ is another free unit that's pretty solid, but she gets much better with Eidolons. At Eidolon 4, she becomes very strong, and at Eidolon 6, she is better than Zila. She is, she's a better than a 5-star. She's she's amazing. Tingyun is a must-build unit. Please build her if you have her. Oh my god! Tingyun is actually god tier. That's all I'm going to say. Look up any review of her. She's amazing. Su Sheng, eh, she's, she's fine. She could be pretty good with Eidolons for breaking shields. Yukong is a good buffing unit at E6, but before then, she's very clunky to play. Almost no one plays her unless she's E6. Emiko, uh, she's got pretty good AoE. She pops off at level 80. She's a she's a character that I, I think is very mid until level 80, and then you get like 15% free crit rate, and she starts to do quite a bit better, but she's pretty average. Most people don't like her. Uh, Welt is very good because he manipulates speed. If you have a Welt, I would recommend you build him. Very good unit. Kafka is a damage over time unit. Uh, does very good damage overall. She's a great unit if you want to do damage over time comps. She's almost necessary. If you like using Sampo, if you want to do that stuff, she is a key piece. Silver Wolf is extremely valuable because she can make any enemy have a particular element weakness. So what that means is an enemy could only be weak to this wind element, but bringing Silverwolf could make the enemy weak to quantum. By putting multiple quantum units in the team, you can actually do a mono quantum setup and you never have to worry about elements ever. It's super strong. She can work in other situations with a bunch of different debuffs uh, that she provides your team. Bronya is busted tier. She's... Just as good as Tingyun, if not better. They have different value. They're both good. I would build both of them. <laughs> That's what I would... I'd build both of them. But Bronya is god tier. Uh, Clara is really good for um, doing, you know, counterattacks and, and eating some damage and punishing the enemy. She's pretty good overall. I, I don't think she'll, she'll stand the test of time, potentially, but she is pretty good. Uh, Luocha is a god tier healer. S S S S S S tier healer, uh, amazing. Uh, Jing Yuan, people roasted this guy that he's not great and that E6 serval is just better. Not a lot of people are happy about how strong this character is. Just a warning, uh, he's very susceptible to CC ruining his entire kit, so be careful. Blade is another like S or S plus tier character, very very strong character. I wish I had him on my accounts. Blade is. Uh, super powerful. Yang Qing is, is interesting. I think he can be very good. He can crit like crazy. I think that, that a well-built Yang Qing is more valuable than people think. So uh, I definitely like him. If you need a DPS unit, there's no problem building him. Bailu has some crazy heals, but she can't cleanse. And the further we've gotten into the game, the more cleansing is necessary. And so... If you're using Bailu, she can definitely keep your team alive, but if you don't have a cleanse, your run might be over anyways. So, she's good. I've got E2 Bailu, but I still don't really use her. That's how valuable cleansing is. Dan Hung IL is cracked. This guy is insanely powerful. He power corrupt a lot of different units. If you have him on your account, you probably won the game. You should build him right now. Arlen doesn't get a lot of usage because he kind of eats into his own HP to do more damage. With Eidolons, he gets better, but no one uses Arlen. Not that he can't hit hard, but he just isn't that popular. And Luka is like a physical damage over time kind of unit, typically used with Kafka. If you're not using Kafka, you probably don't want to use this guy that much. But because I'm making this video now, I want to talk about a couple future characters uh, and if they're going to be good or not. Rumor is that Hoo Hoo is going to be a mixture of healing and generating energy for your team. Um, we don't know yet her kit, but if you're looking for a healer down the road, she might be a good option. 
Argenti is an Iridition physical character, which we've never seen, but in the past, Iridition characters have been weak. This might be different. I haven't looked at all the leaks. You know, I would look at reviews for this guy before you pull. Currently, the leaks are saying that this Hanya girl is very solid as well. She's a Harmony character, and usually they're really good at boosting up your team and making uh, your already strong units stronger. So Hanya definitely has some potential. Jing Liu looks really cool. She's an ice damage dealer. Uh, I think she's really skill point effective from what I can see. I'm going to get her on my other account. I'm very excited for this unit, but she still needs to be tested officially on the servers. And I'll talk about both these characters as well. Topaz is a fire hunt character that boosts up follow-up attacks, and she seems like she's going to kind of last the test of time. Topaz has some major potential. And then Guinevere, Gwyn, Gwynwyn! She is a like a fire debuffing unit that increases damage taken to the enemies, I believe. Um, she has potential. She'll probably work really well with Kafka. Let me explain how these banners work. If you've never played a game like this, they can be very frustrating. Let's get started. So there's a main five-star unit on the banner, and then there are the four-star units, but you're not guaranteed to get them. Here's how it works. If you're wishing on the banner and you're doing your pulls, if you just started the game, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting this unit. If not then you will get some of the other standard five-star units instead. However, if you miss this unit, then the next time you get a five-star, it's guaranteed. So they call it guaranteed or the 50-50. The same thing goes with the four-stars. If for some reason on this banner, uh, you miss the four-star units for a light cone or just a different character, the next one is guaranteed to be on the banner. So if I look at this, I got a light cone. It means that the next four star that I got was guaranteed to be either Pela, Lynx, or Hook. It's not going to tell you which one. And you could literally get this same character 20 times in a row uh, if you're lucky or unlucky. But that's approximately how the banner works. Now, as for this one, the light cone is a 75% chance that you're going to get it. But the same rules apply. If you miss, the next one will be that piece. But uh, for the, the standard wishes, the normal wishes, this one, you can get two light cones in a row. You can get two characters in a row. I've gotten three light cones in a row on my other account. And so it's a little bit random. It's a little bit scammy. This is not something that you should be pulling on ever. If you get free wishes, do it. As you do uh, wishes, you can eventually get this unit, but I'm going to warn you, it takes like a like a year and a half, like two years to get the 300 wishes you need to do this. Do not spend your, your jade doing these standard wishes. If you're at like 299 and you want to get your free unit, go do it. But this is going to take you forever. In the early game, you get a bunch of standard pulls, and that number is going to skyrocket. On my other account, I'm at like 220, but now I only get like 5 five to 10 wishes a month. I think it's it's like 5 to 7, somewhere, somewhere in there. It's not a lot. And so to progress and actually get this is a massive time commitment over a year long, so don't get baited by this. Now, if you're a new player, you'll also have this Departure Warp, which gives you a free 5-star within 50 pulls. But I've got a tip for you. These are discounted, which is pretty good value. But if you get your 5-star early, I would personally stop pulling. The reason why is because you're not guaranteed to get another one at 50. You only get the one. As for me, I ended up getting Bailu on my 20th pull. And so instead of wasting 30 more wishes on this banner, I did the 30 other pulls on the standard banner because each banner has pity. Eventually, you will hit that number and you will get a 5-star unit and I would rather force myself to get a 5-star somewhere down the, low, uh, down the line 30 wishes sooner on this banner than waste it on the other one. On top of that, I'm essentially 30 pulls closer to getting my eventual uh, Bronya than I would be if I pulled on the other banner. Sometimes you're going to go all the way to 50. There's nothing you can do about it. But for me, I was lucky and I was able to save myself some pulls because I got my five star early.
Now, this is my main account, and I've got a lot of five-star units, and copies of a lot of five-star units, and I've even got some light cones and things. I've got a lot of five-stars on this account, and the way that I got it was by re-rolling. Now, should you re-roll? It is time-consuming re-rolling, but if you were to play through multiple times, use up those free wishes, you could try to get a new account with a five-star early, but unfortunately, a lot of the free pulls that were available when I re-rolled are gone. And so, in the current state of the game, I feel like you're probably wasting your time a little bit. If you, uh, if you look at it this way, go work an hour or two hours and, and, and put a couple dollars into the game is probably more cost-effective and time-effective than re-rolling 50 times to get a slightly better count. It's probably better to buy yourself the monthly pass and just not put yourself through that hell. You know what I'm saying? Just take your account and run with it. Another niche tip is there are some food buffs that you can get in game that will boost up your attack tremendously. And in the early game, this can like double or even triple your damage. And so if you see a big chest with a big enemy and it's all red and you're scared of them, if you pop a food buff, it'll typically be enough to like stomp that enemy. Um, I don't really use it this often or that often, but if you're doing, you know, your weekly world bosses, right? Or, you know, the echoes of war, this could be a good opportunity for you to pop this and make it a little bit smoother on yourself, but support characters can also help you. This is not something that I really pay attention to long term, but in the early game, it's actually pretty clutch. If you want to progress your account, I want to talk about the main things. So, obviously, do all the events that are available because they're usually good value. Uh, but the core thing you want to do is every day you want to spend your energy and you want to get as much progress uh, in, in experience traces and guaranteed upgrades on that. But the other big thing that you want to do is every single day you need to do your dailies. They're relatively easy to do, but this gives you a ton of this trailblaze level experience, and this is a limiting factor for how good your account will be. You need to get that TL up, the world level up, so that you can get better drops. It also gives you your daily Stellar Jade, and it's a pretty good source uh, of even materials to level up your relics. If you're not doing your dailies, you probably shouldn't even play the game, honestly, because you're not going to progress anywhere near where you could, and it only takes like three or four minutes to do. On top of that, as you do the battle pass and you level up your TL level, you're going to get fuel. You might even get it from some different events. This is a very good resource, and I would personally hoard them until around TL 50 if you want to farm some gold artifacts then or relics then, but this gets more valuable as you get further into the game. That being said, if you use the fuel early, you will also get more experience to make your daily energy more valuable sooner. It doesn't really matter. People really argue that it matters, but at the end of the day, fuel can be burned and used down the road when you're a higher level and you're starting to get purple drops, or you could use it so that you can complete another quest that day because you're really close to a level. Again, it doesn't matter too, too much. Um, if you want to use it when there's some double drop events going on or things like that, that's pretty cool. I burnt mine a little sooner than I probably should have, but there's one thing you should never do. Do not use your Stellar Jade for energy. Ever. I did it on my account like an idiot just because I wanted to play more. Don't ask. This is a big mistake. And for my final tip... If there's a character that you want and you see is coming, don't pull on banners that you don't want the five star. I got a different five star on the last banner. He's very good. He's very powerful. But because of that decision, I am not going to get Fushuan most likely before she goes away. And she would be a game changer for my account. I am going to miss her because I was greedy and I was pulling and I was trying to get, I don't even know what I was doing. I, I just, I just made a mistake. Something that a lot of people do is they build pity. What that means is they keep on wishing after they get the character and they try to get different four star units. They try to snipe a good four star here and there. The issue with that is you can absolutely snipe a five star and ruin your chances. And I did that. 
And unfortunately, because I did that, the next five star that I got ended up being Bailu. And I'm close to pity. I'm pretty close. But I'm still multiple wishes away. And by the time this banner goes away, I'm probably going to not get this character. And it, it hurts. It feels really, really bad. Don't make this mistake. Only pull if you actually want that five star. If you actually like the four stars on the banner. If not, save. Overall, those are my top tips. If anyone has a really good tip, put it in the chat down below. Put it in the comment section down below because it might change someone's life forever who's starting their journey for Honkai Star Rail. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.